Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Equityverse. Today, we're gonna to be comparing NVIDIA in this cycle to Cisco in the cycle going into the year 2000. The reason we're doing this is because it seems like it is a very popular comparison. And so what I wanna do is go through and see just how similar and dissimilar they are by looking at various metrics. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. I know we mostly talk about crypto, but I do want to go into some of the uh, into the Equiverse for a little bit, especially given this move by Nvidia. And what I'm going to do in this video is we are going to look at the price the price chart some, we're also going to go through a lot of fundamental metrics that can be used to try to evaluate a, a, a certain company, all right? So the first thing we can do is over on the Into the Cryptoverse website, we actually do have an equity tab. And one of the cool things about it is we can filter all of these charts such that the only charts that come up when we click on them are of the asset that we're interested in. So for instance, if we are interested in NVIDIA, we can simply click on NVIDIA. And then when we go to one of these charts, let's say we wanna look at the price to earnings ratio, we click on it and therefore it pulls it up for NVIDIA. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but I'm going to pull up Cisco. And we're gonna go through a lot of these charts to just see how closely or how close the 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 move is from, from that cycle to this cycle and, and how different. Okay. So the first thing we could look at is the price to earnings ratio, which we're gonna go be going through a lot of different metrics in this video. And so I don't really wanna um, explain every single one, but I will at least try to scroll down so that you guys can see the description and see the usage of it if you want to actually you know, follow along more closely with, with what it is we're talking about. But just briefly, the price to earnings ratio is just a metric to evaluate sort of the price of the stock relative to its uh, trailing 12 months of earnings. So what you'll notice is that Cisco in the dot-com era went to a price to earnings ratio of 96 Point seven four. Following that, it then fell all the way back down to a price to earnings ratio of six. But note that it took 12 years to get back down to that valuation. And it also took almost three years, maybe two and a half years or so to get back to a, a, a price to earnings ratio of approximately 16. Um, so it took quite a long period of time. And if we go look at what it looks like for NVIDIA, we can see that first of all, there was a massive spike over there. But if we look at what's going on right now, we can see that back in April, you know, the last couple of the last few quarters, we, we actually did reach a price to earnings ratio of 90. Again, Cisco went all the way up to 96, 96.74. Then after going up to around the 90s, the price to earnings ratio of NVIDIA fell to about 47. And then now it went just went back up to around 78.78 in January. And what we have here is sort of the forward guidance, sort of like the, the sort of the projections. But of course, these where it changes color over here, this is not set in stone. And obviously that is subject to change. So we can at least see that they have gone to similar valuations in terms of the price to earnings. But we also know that Cisco went to a higher price to earnings than NVIDIA went so far in this parabolic rally. So that's one thing that we can look at. Now, here's an interesting one to look at. This is the price to book ratio, right? And as I said, I'm just going to scroll down so that you can see the description, you can see the usage, but I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Just pause the video and then you can read how this is, you know, how this is relevant. But just a quick tidbit, the, the way, the reason we use the price to book is because it, it essentially tells us if the stock price is trading in line with the book value of the company. So if it's, um, you know, like, so basically if it's near, I think a value of one, 
um, then then it would arguably be that it's sort of fairly priced, right? I mean, it says it right here, right? A, a P, PB ratio of one means that the stock is trading in line with the book value of the company. So for NVIDIA, the price to book ratio is currently 30.57 as of October of 2023, as of Q4, right? For Q4 of, of 2023. Um, note that in July, so in, in, in the prior quarter, it went all the way up to 42.46. So it's basically between that 30 to 40 range, although it could certainly go higher uh, when we get more results in the next quarter. But I also want to pull up the same chart for Cisco and see how high that one went during the dot-com crash. And you can actually see that it went all the way up to around 17 to 18. So NVIDIA is actually, the price to book ratio is actually higher now than Cisco's was all the way back over here in April of 2000. Now, what's interesting is after NVIDIA, sorry, after Cisco went to a price to book ratio of 18, and it seemed like it was never going to come back down again, you can see that actually 12 years later, the price to book ratio was all the way back down to around one. So what I'm, what I'm sort of suggesting here is that while we could eventually see the NVIDIA price to book ratio back near one, I mean, it, it could frankly take a decade to get there. Um, you can see that after the after the bubbles popped, the price to book ratio went all the way back down to around 1.96. So it got down to around two. And from that level, that's where the stock price ultimately bottomed. While the price to book ratio went lower later on, the stock price actually bottomed when the price to book ratio went to approximately two. Again, right now, NVIDIA is all the way up here in the 30s and 40s. But you can see that about, in fact, a decade ago, it was around one. And so I think the dangerous part of these rallies by NVIDIA is that no one is denying. I mean, I don't think anyone's denying that the, that it's been impressive. No one's saying, you know, trying to, well, I'm sure some people are trying to call the top, but it's impossible, right? Like it's absolutely impossible to call the top on something like that. And, and when Cisco finally topped in the dot-com era, it topped, I believe, on relatively good numbers. It's just that a lot of its, you know, a lot of the the things that it offered ended up being commoditized, and and the price eventually fell in line with what ultimately a fair value would be. But in the time, you can certainly get swept away, right? And 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 what's ultimately going on, and and also we know that they can last for a long time. If you look at the rally by Cisco, I mean, this rally really started in like 1990, and it didn't finalize until a decade later. If you look at NVIDIA, we could argue that this rally started basically in 2013. And now we're, you know, we're a little over a decade later. And so it, it, it seems like there's, there's something similar setting up here, but it's absolutely impossible to predict exactly how high NVIDIA will go. We could also go look at some other metrics. So we've looked at the price to earnings. We've looked at price to book. Now, why don't we look at price to sales? Okay, so now we're gonna look at the price to sales ratio of NVIDIA, and then we're gonna compare it to, to Cisco. So as always, gonna scroll down so that you can see what the description is and look at the usage. In general, a high price to sell ratio suggests that a company is overvalued in the market. So if it's greater than one, it suggests that it's overvalued. And, and I imagine um, you know, most of these are gonna be well above um, or this is going to be well above that level when we look at it. So price to sales ratio of Cisco in the dot-com era went all the way up to 20.98 and then cratered all the way back down to when it hit the low, it went all the way back down to a little less than three. Now, the price to sales ratio of NVIDIA is current. It just went to 35.64. So it actually went higher. Now, the tricky thing about this is that had you only used the price to sales ratio, you may have assumed that this peak over here was the top because it went to 26, which is actually higher than Cisco went back during the dot-com crash. That's why it's useful to use a lot of different metrics and not just a single one. But ultimately, cooler heads prevailed and eventually it came back down to earth, even though it took a long time to do so, right? There's a lot of people that keep calling the top on NVIDIA, right? And I mean, 
from a, a sort of like from a, a, a rational point of view, we can look at the earnings and see that they look absolutely spectacular. Um, the problem is that there will be competition and, and the margins will likely be compressed over a long enough period of time. And so while I'm not doubting the long longevity of the company as a whole, it's just saying, look, like it, we, we know we're in a bubble and, and just like Cisco was in a bubble. And even though Cisco was in a bubble, it still it had a crash and then it still just continued on, right? I mean, it still is on a general upward trajectory. A lot of people, you know, maybe talk about it in a negative way because it hasn't really taken out the highs from, you know, two decades ago. But the reality is, is if you just ignore that bubble phase, that irrational phase, and you just sort of draw a line through here, it's been on a steady incline for a long time. And so while eventually NVIDIA could do something similar and meet the same fate, it doesn't mean that it won't continue to grow. It just means that at some point you likely will have a larger correction. And then from that level, we will get back to more realistic valuations. I think a lot of times it's easy to get carried away in the in the sort of the bubble mania and assume that it'll never go down. And the reason is because it can last for years before it before it changes. But it is something it's worthwhile to at least take a step back and look at this stuff and say, hey, we've seen this stuff before. Um, we know it can go on longer than most people think it can. Eventually, it'll probably come back down to earth. It's really hard to, to know exactly when that will, will be. Um, there's also other things we could look at as well. Uh, we could look at like the running ROI of Cisco. The, this is the one-year ROI, and we can see that it basically just was hovering here around two to three for a long time, and then eventually it collapsed. So let's go look at the same thing for NVIDIA and see where it is. You can see it's also hovering between two to three for a long period of time. And so again, it's another similarity um, that eventually we'll likely see something that looks like this, right? But the timing of that is, is going to be very, very difficult. And I'm sure a lot of people are trying to time it and they just keep getting stopped out, okay? So you have to be careful. You know, it, trying to time the crash with this stuff is, is incredibly difficult to do. I certainly can't do it. Um, and I, I think what it's better used for is just looking at it as a signal, okay? You're looking at NVIDIA as a potential signal for, you know, for other aspects of the market. So that's, that's that metric. Um, we could look at, you know, I mean, we could look at, say, the year-to-date ROI of Cisco and, and maybe look at, at what it did in 1999 and see that it went up 2.25x. And then perhaps we'll do the same thing for um, NVIDIA and see what did it do in 2023? It went up over 3x. And what did NVIDIA do in 2022, right? You can see that it actually had a bear market. And if you look at 1998 for Cisco, there was also a bear market somewhere in there. Now, if we go look at the price chart for Cisco, what you will see is that if this is to be the 19, so this is sort of that 1998 bear market where Cisco dropped, what's fascinating is after that drop from that low, it then rallied 683%. But what we're going to do is, is look at this on a monthly because I want to show you something. What's, what's more interesting is that from the 1998 low, from October of 1998, it rallied, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get this as exact as I can. So just bear with me for a moment. It rallied over the course of 17 months, and it ultimately went up about 700 percent. So a 696 percent rally, give or take a few percent. Right? What's a few percent among friends over the course of 17 months, or about 517 days? Okay, so that's from that 1998 bear market. Now, NVIDIA has done something somewhat similar in that we had this bear market over here in 2022, which also happened to end in October, right? Just like the one for, for Cisco did. It ended in October of the midterm year. NVIDIA's bear market over here ended in October of the midterm year. And we know that Cisco went up almost 700% over the following 17 months. And then if you go look at NVIDIA here, 
And I'm going to switch this over to a monthly time frame, just like we did with, with, um, with Cisco. From this low, you can see that it's been so far, I mean, just at this point, it's been 16 months. And NVIDIA has gone up 605%. So again, Cisco went up 700% over 17 months. NVIDIA is up 600% over 16 months. We know that Cisco topped out in March. Right? It topped out in March. And what was interesting about when it topped out was that it happened to correspond, right? It happened to correspond to the unemployment rate at it being at a really low level. And that's the thing that I, I, I frequently come back to and I, I see a lot of people say, you know, how can, how can this stuff ever come down when the unemployment rate is, is so low? When the market it reaches a point where it seems like, you know, if it reaches a point where it seems like there's no way that things could get any better, that's ultimately what marks the top because, you know, the, the, the reference point is going to be constantly something that is going to continue. Like, it's going to be hard to continue that growth if the market starts to think, all right, well, as we get further out, the unemployment rate will go up, you know? So 700% over 17 months. NVIDIA is currently up 600% over 16 months. To give you an idea of what a 700% rally from the low would look like, over 17 months, it would mean NVIDIA going all the way up. And I'm going to get it actually at the, the same number, 696%. Um, that would be between eight to 900. What's actually fascinating is that the low that Cisco put in during the, during the, the midterm year in 1998, what you'll see here is that it was around 10. And NVIDIA, the low, was around 100. So basically, it's just a 10x difference in the price, right? So Cisco bottomed at around 10, NVIDIA bottomed at 100, and then Cisco ultimately topped at 82, right? And NVIDIA is currently at 780. So I know there's a lot of people calling for NVIDIA to go to 1,000 or 1,100. I think 1,100 seems to be a number that a lot of people have in mind. I do wonder... Um, if it'll make it there, it certainly could. I'm certainly not going to try to stand in the way of it. I, you know, these bubbles that that occur, there's really no sense in in trying to 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 try to time the exact top. But with that said, it is interesting that if it were to repeat what Cisco did, it means that it wouldn't actually make it all the way to a thousand. And so perhaps there's a lot of people out there waiting for it to reach a thousand or eleven hundred to finally sell, but then it actually doesn't reach that, that milestone, leaving a lot of people holding the bag, right? Now, again, I don't know if it's going to reach that level or not. I want to be clear. It, it certainly could reach it, but I also have to imagine that with Cisco, there were probably a lot of people waiting for it to hit 100 to, to cash in on that sweet, sweet 10x move off the lows, and then ultimately it didn't do that. And then after that top, it then proceeded to dump about 90% over the next 31 months. Um, and so I think that is, is, is something that, you know, it, it's worthwhile to remember that that could theoretically happen. Now, it could also happen on a different time scale, right? Like NVIDIA topped out, or sorry, Cisco topped out in March. That doesn't mean that NVIDIA has to top out in March. I just find it interesting that it seems like it's following a very similar tune, right? And NVIDIA this month, is up about 27% or so. Um, I mean, you can see that as Cisco was reaching these highs, it was going up about 20% a month, right? I mean, this is 20%, 20%, and then a red month, or no, slightly up, um, but then 20% and then 17%, right? NVIDIA has been doing something very similar where it's got, you know, 15%, 6%, 24%, 27%. It's, it's making a similar type of move off of that, you know, off of that sort of that intermediate consolidation area. Um, so that's an interesting, you know, interesting way to look out at the market. And then also, I, I, there's a lot of other things that we could look at. Um, I, this one might be an interesting one, the days since we've had a certain percentage decline with NVIDIA. And I'm going to pull up the same thing uh, for Cisco. So let's look at 
Oh, that's that's the gain. I want to look at at decline. So if you look at NVIDIA here, we can see that it's been about 538 days since it had a 30% drop, right? If you look at Cisco back over here, what's fascinating is that it reached 574 days before it had a 30% drop, which is about two more months from now. It's fascinating how similar it is, right, in, 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 in this way. Um, that it's about the same amount of time and, 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 and that this high here uh, on time from a 30% drop to another one was about the same. And if you go look at NVIDIA, it seems like we're, you know, we're getting up, you know, fairly close to where this one went. This one went all the way up to 674 days. We're currently at 538. So that would imply a few more months, um, potentially. Now, if you look at Cisco really closely on a weekly time frame in order to understand how the actual market structure played out after Cisco put in its final high in the 80 range, it then had a pullback down to that wick right there, which happened to correspond to 50. 50. Why is that interesting? Why is 50 interesting? Well, we talked about how it seems like it's like a 10x move difference. If you go look at NVIDIA, the similar spot would be 500. And the reason why 500 is interesting is because that's exactly where it found resistance for a while. So what happens if NVIDIA reaches some type of blow off top up in here, right? It goes up in here, reaches a blow off top, and then comes back down. And maybe it doesn't take that long, but like, you know, comes back down. Peaks up here somewhere, right? Comes back down to around the 500 range. That's basically what Cisco did, right? It came back down to around $50, 50, $50 a share. It then had a dead cap bounce back up to $70 per share. And then it finally rolled over and, and the market collapsed. So looking at NVIDIA, if it were to do something similar, it would mean you know topping out sometime in the next few months. I don't know exactly when, I don't know exactly what price, eventually coming back down to 500, finding some support around that $500 range, bouncing back up to 700, um, and, then, and then rolling over and going back to more reasonable valuations, right? Again, it doesn't mean that NVIDIA won't be successful. It probably will be. It's just that eventually, eventually there has to be some type of larger cooldown period, I would, I would imagine. Um, I, I, I guess if you were to look at the, the monthly RSI, uh, you can see where NVIDIA is, and I'd like to at least look to see where it was for uh, Cisco way back in the day to see if it was doing anything remotely similar. And I mean, you can see that it was. I mean, basically, it was just hanging out at, at, at relatively high monthly RSI valuations, and then it actually ultimately topped out at a monthly RSI of 93. Uh, NVIDIA RSI on the monthly right now is currently 82. Um, the highest it's gone, I mean, it's already gone higher than Cisco went because it went up to 95 over here. In fact, it almost looks like it's been putting in lower highs on, on the monthly RSI for, for quite a while. But that's another interesting way, I think, to, to, to look at, at Cisco versus NVIDIA. And then there's perhaps some more charts that we could look at. Um, there is, of course, the short-term bubble risk, which is essentially just the extension from the 20-week moving average. Uh, we're going to pull this up for both Cisco and NVIDIA. So we can see that Cisco, uh, way back in the day, basically reached a short-term bubble risk level of up here, you know, 1.5 or so, maybe a little bit higher, around 1.5. Um, NVIDIA is currently sitting at 1.3. So it's getting extended. In order to reach 1.5, it would need to be 50% above its bull market support band or 50% above its 20 week moving average and 50% above the 20 week SMA right now would actually put it at just over 800. Note though that the 20 week SMA is moving up relatively quickly. So if we were to extend the 20 week SMA out into March um, and, and take say like a 50% move from that level, then it would correspond to 889, 889. And remember, Cisco ultimately topped out 
here at 82. So very similar moves in, in some regards, um, different in others. It's not like every metric we've looked at has been the same. Um, you know, the price to earnings and, and, and that sort of stuff has had some differences. So I think that's in, in you know, that's at least somewhat important to, um, to keep in mind. And I don't know if there are any other charts. The great thing about, and again, I don't, I don't talk about it a whole lot, but the great thing about this website is that I know it's called Into the Cryptoverse, uh, but we've got a lot of stuff. I mean, this is also for equity. So if you want to do the same type of analysis for a ton of different stocks, you can do it, right? You can just go to the, the asset filter, the equity asset filter, scroll down to all these different equities. I mean, look, we're still in the A's at this point as I scroll down. Um, there's, there's just so many of them. Uh, that, you know, I mean, it's now we just got to the B's, right? And so you can you can basically go do that. And if you do that, it'll it'll pull up all the charts that we have for that asset. And then when you click on that chart, it'll automatically preload that asset. And if you don't want to switch over from one tab to another, for instance, if you want to look at, you know, company assets, this is company assets for NVIDIA. And instead of switching from one tab to another, you could also just come in here and say, all right, now I want to look at it for Meta. What are, you know, what does this look like for Meta? What does it look like for Google? Um, and so on and so forth, right? What does their debt look like? What does the debt look like for NVIDIA right now? What does the debt look like for Microsoft? So that might be an interesting way um, to, to navigate the equity markets by looking at, at a lot of those charts and just kind of seeing if there is a bubble, how far could it theoretically extend um, or, or how far could it not? You know, I've been involved in several of these bubble phases um, not only this one that we find ourselves in, but also others. And, and what tends to happen is that a lot of people who are a lot more conservative, uh, you know, tend to call for these pullbacks because that's what normally happens in normal times, right? You get, you'll get moves higher and then you'll get a pullback, right? Like look at, look at the price chart of Microsoft, right? You'll get a pull, you'll get a move higher, you'll get a pullback, right? And so then when you go into these bubble phases, a lot of people, like what'll happen is that, the, you know, we're, everyone's so used to getting those pullbacks that when it doesn't happen, those people get mocked, right? They get made fun of because they're like, oh, well, you were bearish. You were calling for a, a pullback and it, and it didn't get it. I'm not calling for really anything with NVIDIA. I'm not an expert on NVIDIA at all. But there are a lot of people out there that, that have, you know, tried um, navigating NVIDIA. And I think from most rational perspectives, it is due for a pullback at some point. But remember, the market... Can, can stay irrational much longer than most people can stay solid, okay? You know, looking at, at the chart of Cisco, I have to imagine that everyone that was calling for pullbacks throughout this entire phase was mocked and ridiculed. And then eventually, after all those people got completely washed out of the market, right, then it co the collapse began. But for a long time, it made those people look absolutely ridiculous because I'm sure they tried to call the top every step of the way and, and they just ended up being incredibly unsuccessful at doing so. Eventually they were right, right? In terms of, hey, like it makes sense to get a pullback. And that's what is likely happening now with, with NVIDIA, right? Like it can climb that wall of worry um, until we see some type of larger macroeconomic headwind, for instance, the labor market or something uh, starting to show weakness. But it's hard to know exactly the time frame on something like that. And, and so what ends up happening is that a lot of people, they, they, they look at the chart and they're like, you know, how do you look at this chart, right? It, it, for me, when I look at a chart like this, um, the first thing I do is I just sort of admire it and think about like how crazy of a chart that is to look at. And then I think like there's, just, there's probably some people out there that have never bought NVIDIA in their life and they're deciding to do it for the first time right here, right? And in the short term, what happens is people buy these parabolic rallies, they get rewarded, and so they sort of incentivize to continue to do it. And then eventually when a pullback happens, it can be very fierce and quick and, and, and leave people um, not really knowing what happened, right? I mean, this, you know, once Cisco finally got a drop that started in March, it dropped, you know, 40% over two months, right? NVIDIA, as we showed earlier, NVIDIA hasn't even had a 30% correction in over a year and a half. So if NVIDIA starts to falter, that could be signaling faltering in other aspects of the market. The reason why I say that 
is because what happens during business, these, these cycles, right? What happens when we're in higher rates and, and whatnot is that these companies, they, and, and why don't we overlay US interest rates onto the chart? You know, what happens is these companies that as you get into tighter and tighter monetary policy, these companies, they basically absorb all this liquidity because no one knows who's going to survive the, you know, a, a potential recession. No one knows who's going to be able to survive it. And so they just pile into the stuff that keeps on doing well, keeps on having this great cash flow, making a lot of money because they say, you know what, even if, even if, um, even if there's a recession, so what? right? The company will probably survive because they have all this cash. Um, and that's why I think a lot of people pile into these other names. Uh, it's the same thing with like the Magnificent Seven. Some of those from the Magnificent Seven have started to fall off, right? Like some of them are not uh, doing as well. And so after all of them have finally stopped performing, um, that's when sort of the larger turn comes. And that is where the uh, sort of the lower market cap stuff goes down with the higher market cap stuff, but it doesn't go down as much as the higher market cap stuff because the lower market cap stuff got sold off already because no one wanted to buy it because no one knew which ones were going to survive. When you get back to looser monetary policy, they're like, oh, that might, that company survives. Let me throw my money into that. And that's often why like things like the Russell will finally start to outperform. Um, you know, like if you look at the Russell divided by the S&P 500, what you'll see is that it, it just continues to drop. Right, it just continues to drop. But look at where the Russell finally started to outperform the the S and P last cycle. It didn't even start until May of 1999. But you can see that there was a lot of consolidation into only a few names back then. Right, only a few names, and and then eventually we had a big bounce to turn back the other way. Now, right now, the current valuations that we've gone to are very similar to where we were back in 1990. I don't know if we're going to make it all the way down here or not. This is where the dot-com era took us. Um, if we were to make it down there, it would imply the Russell bleeding to the S&P another 22%. But maybe we just bounce at the current levels, right? Maybe the Russell goes down a little bit more um, and then bounces. I, it's really hard to say. But that is something that is at least worth, I think, uh, I think keeping in mind is that you know these that the Russell has but maybe maybe we actually should compare it to the Nasdaq over the S&P if you look at like the Russell against the Nasdaq i mean it's already below where we were at the dot com levels right it's actually below it which is kind of scary to think about in some ways um, in other ways it's not that scary uh, it, it, maybe it's not maybe scary is not the right word in other ways it, it makes sense because you know the companies that are successful in the Russell uh, ultimately get kicked out of the Russell right um, if, if you're successful in the NASDAQ, you don't get kicked out. It's the unsuccessful companies that get kicked out. So it makes sense that over a long period of time, the Russell would bleed uh, to the NASDAQ, which is essentially exactly what has happened. Um, how much further down will it go? I don't know. Uh, but it has, you know, it's continuing to, to, to slowly push a little bit lower, uh, you know, one month at a time. So that is the comparison that we've made between Cisco in the dot-com era and NVIDIA this cycle. Hopefully you find it useful. Again, if you wanna perform similar types of analysis, check out the sale on intothecryptoverse.com. You can just simply go over to the charts tab, click on equities. You can also do the same thing with crypto. You know, If there's some random altcoin that I never talk about that you wanna go investigate, we got hundreds on here. And if you click on one, let's say for whatever, uh, let's say you wanna, you wanna check out Ethereum. It'll then pull up all these charts that we have on, on Ethereum, right? You can look at the running one day ROI, sorry, the running 365 day ROI of ETH. So I think it's a great tool uh, to, nav to navigate the markets with. You know, I'm only one person. I can't possibly cover the thousands of different equities on this, on this website, the hundreds of different cryptocurrencies and the hundreds of macro charts that we have. But if you have a lot of free time and you're a, you know, and you like, to invest, I think this website does give you a lot of tools that you can use to, to navigate those assets that you're interested in, right? Even though I might not talk about them, it doesn't mean that we don't have the tools over here that you could use to access um, the charts for that asset. So just know that that is there. It is part of Into the Cryptoverse Premium. Links in the description below. Make sure you guys check it out. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Give the video a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.